Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro, and it's time to review Tar. This is directed by Todd Field. It's his first film since Little Children, way back when. It follows the character Lydia Tar, who is a world-renowned classical music composer, and her fall from grace. This movie really is a long and patient character study, and it's an examination, I guess, of what you could call cancel culture, but in a much less sensationalized way. I think Todd Field wants to give us this movie so that we can observe this phenomenon in a more broad sense and look at where maybe this generational shift happened where people are wanting to peer into artists' identities and valuing that more than they did in the past. I also think it's just grappling with the overall idea that the perception of these people and and of history over time is going to change and it's not going to be in our hands like i feel like maybe that's even the central thesis of the film you know this like tight insistence on controlling one's image and one's perception only to be faced with the possibility that the entire facade could be obliterated by changing tides and changing ways in which people view public figures and artists etc also if you have seen the movie and you're more interested in hearing our thoughts because of our analysis of the movie, you should check out the spoiler video that I will publish soon after this one. So depending on when you're watching this, it may already be up or you should just be looking forward to it. As for my experience of this movie, I have seen it twice. And the first time I felt like I don't really have the best grasp on this film. Part of the reason that it was difficult for me to get my head around it was because normally my film analysis gear is going to be shifted towards what's the movie trying to say. And the difficult thing with this, and not in a bad way, is that I don't think Todd Field is giving us answers and is telling us exactly where he stands on this. I think he's presenting a lot more questions and that would be a helpful thing to keep in mind as you go into this movie because sometimes it does feel like there's something being said on this side and then there's a point being made towards the opposite side. And it's kind of difficult to understand if we're supposed to take away a central thesis regarding Todd Field's position on these changing tides. And I really don't think we are. And I think that really has helped me unlock more meaning in this film. That being said, on both viewings, I did feel a little cold at the end, like not sure if I care that much about what is happening. Part of me is watching going like, yes, this is a well-made movie and this dialogue is super witty and dense and it's kind of like playful and intellectual. And you know, that, that all floated my boat, but it didn't float it all the way up to the surface. You know, my boat was still a little bit underwater. We had to get a couple buckets underwater. to take that water out. Like, I didn't feel that I was on the film's wavelength the whole time. And I don't really know why that is because it's not like having a character who's sort of elusive or who's very secretive or is kind of unemotional, a little stoic. Those aren't necessarily things that would turn me away from a movie. But I guess at times, like maybe part of it was that there's some things that are represented abstractly that I'm just like, I don't know what you're trying to do here. And I'm sure there are answers that I just didn't understand. I probably like this movie more than you. I didn't necessarily come out of it like, oh my God, Tar is the best movie of the year. It's like some people are, but I got a lot out of this movie on the second viewing. And what I love about it is that Todd Field really, really respects the audience's intelligence. That's for sure. He, he almost makes you feel smart. While well, watching this or movie. dumb, because, you know, conversely, he sure. could, it could make you feel quite dumb. The skill in the writing is that the details are there for you to pick up on and he trusts you to figure them out. Whether it's like paying attention to like a certain handbag that comes back in another scene or clues into the dynamic of Lydia's relationship with her wife and what really are the rules, like what really is going on there mm -hmm. and clues into her past, which are very subtle. It doesn't even paint the full picture of what's going on in her life, it just gives you enough and kind of lets you fill in the blanks. And interestingly, I, I even noticed going back, the second teaser to this movie has a lot of shots that are not in this movie. And what probably happened is they went, you know what, less might be more here. We can take out some of the details here and the audience is still gonna understand stuff. The first three scenes in the movie take up like 25 minutes. The first scene is just a long interview between Lydia Tarr and, and a guy interviewing her. That was a, I, I thought that scene on the second viewing especially felt really important. This movie really is built on long extended conversations and the reason that it works and the reason that I, I almost did find it riveting 
is because the dialogue is so dense. There's so much to pick up on. And of course, the delivery of this dialogue is just so pitch perfect by Kate Blanchett. Like she is just endlessly watchable, elevating every single word, every single sentence. Yeah, I mean, Kate Blanchett just doesn't hesitate in this film. Like there's many long takes on her and it feels like if she even broke for half a second, the trick would be over and we wouldn't buy who she is. But she's able to stay like in this zone and in this like protective space of her image like at all times and it is fascinating to see. And I agree with what you're saying about the dialogue being so dense that there are lines that I'll replay in my head that I remember like, oh yeah, this is actually more meaningful than I originally thought. Even as I said that the movie is posing more questions than answers, I remember that there's a scene at the piano when Kate Blanchett says that box music poses more questions than answers. And I was like, I wonder if that's like a, trying to clue you in as to Todd Field's intentions. Like there's a lot packed in here that I'm sure I didn't even pick up on. But like, again, I don't think I caught every single one of those. Some of them felt elusive to me, especially towards like the last half. There were some things going on that I was just like, I don't really know what that is. Again, like I did struggle to find that core as to like why I should care about this film. And I think that's really important to extracting the meaning from any given detail. I actually do find the movie really valuable in terms of how it's contributing to the conversation that we're having about these topics like separating the art from the artist, cancel culture, power dynamics, and more subtle forms of manipulation that can go on. And like you said, the movie does offer more questions than answers. And I think it almost says more about the audience, like what they take away from the movie. I agree that the movie is sort of an invitation to reflect on the moment and the culture that we're in right now. It's easy to start talking about the film and then start finding that you're actually talking about like your own world that you live in. I think that's a great reason to see Tar, if that's something that you like to do, if you like to engage in those sort of ideas. He sort of escapes the polarization that naturally happens around these discussions where it's refreshingly difficult to like put the movie in a box. As much as people around us would like to feed us simple answers, I think he's really engaged in like the most complex parts of these questions. As for the score, I walked away from the film, even in the second viewing going, there wasn't really a score there because Blanchett is conducting Gustav Mahler's Fifth Symphony. So this is not the original score and there's also not music in the movie other than that. But Hilda Gunnarsdottir, and I had to read about this. I think people are going to be really curious what her role in the movie was. And she's aware that you will watch the movie and not understand what her role is. And she thinks that is an asset. And Todd Field and her worked very closely together from the beginning of this film. And all this was very surprising to me because I did not hear a lot of music in this. But it's kind of like Aronofsky's Mother, where Johan Johansson made a score for that, but it was like, sound. It was like whatever the house was doing in a certain scene. And that happens in this movie. And I wish I knew that going in for the second viewing because I would have liked to try to pick up on where that was. Some of the sounds are a little bit musical. I don't know if you noticed that, but there's like a scene when she's like punching a bag and it's like it's yeah. a rhythm. You know, there's like scenes in her house that are somewhat musical. I think there's probably more that I didn't pick up on. You know, keep your ears open and see if you can find these little nuggets that Hilda Gunnar-Dottir is like putting in here. That being said, you know, I feel like this can't, this is not gonna get a score nomination because most people will watch it and go, there, where was the score? One thing I did notice is that the, the way that they recreate the score is very attentive to detail. The way the orchestra responds to Kate Blanchett's direction is like astounding. I mean, you could really feel like you were hearing her notes in like the next iteration. Do you think maybe Hilder conducted this yeah, orchestra? that's what I yeah. think. Okay. I think that's very possible, but I don't know that for sure because she didn't say that in this mm -hmm. interview. I and interesting that this is eligible for the Oscars, especially, you know, that being mm -hmm. the case because it is a very unconventional score. You know, while we're on the topic of awards, we recently published a predictions video. I stand by picture, director, actress, original screenplay. A lot of people are really, really into this movie. It is not as like weirdo, wacko movie that maybe the first couple teasers would suggest. It's just like a patient, smart film that I think a lot of people will really respect. And I don't see how this would get picture without getting director and screenplay. Like, I just feel like that needs to be part of the package. It's also a really watchable movie. I think it's really just the sharp writing and Kate Blanche's performance that are just 
just kind of like consistently engaging and entertaining throughout. I don't think it's a movie that will turn people off like in severely. Kate Blanche's performance is one of those things where everything has already been said about it, but it really is, I think, one of the very best performances of this year. And this character is so memorable. And others have compared it to like Daniel Day Lewis and Phantom Thread or even There Will Be Blood. This character who has crafted this meticulous persona for themselves, and you're watching their every move like as if they are controlling this persona. It's pretty remarkable. And this movie rests so much on just having an actress of like the utmost talent to be front and center here. And you know, that's what makes the movie work. Like she's really brilliant. I think she will be in the winning conversation. I don't know if she'll be more of like, you know, just critics are giving her all the awards and then main precursors go elsewhere. I think that's possible, but it's also possible she just wins her third Oscar here. For me, I didn't feel like, oh, this is Daniel Day-Lewis in The Early Blood. Like I wasn't ready to say that after my watch of this movie. But I think again, it depends on like, where you stand on the movie overall. If you love this movie, you're gonna be like fucking blown away. I think the comparison to Day-Lewis and Phantom Thread is more accurate, but I will say I, I did feel a little bit of doubt that she is the front runner. You know, it's sort of a transformation, but also not so much. And she doesn't have like a lot of huge moments. So this is an a acting that's gonna be appreciated more by like a certain group of people than another one. Like like a Frances McDormand win though. Yeah, you know what kind I mean? of like that. Yeah, that's fair. And then maybe like the people who loved like Chastain and Tammy Faye will be like, Somebody you know, else. oh, someone else is like doing more. It, it's also looking like this could be one of the most win competitive years we've had in a long time. Also, we should talk about Nina Haas because this does feel to me like it could be a performance like a Jesse Buckley in The Lost Daughter or a Leslie Manville in Phantom Thread type of nomination that people don't necessarily expect maybe it gets BAFTA, but then it gets in at the Oscar. Like I very much do buy that this could happen. She didn't have like a ton of screen time and I think maybe one more scene could have really like hit at home for her. But what Nina Haas does for every second of her screen time is carries the weight of this character's history with Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett will be conducting her orchestra and then you'll just have a reaction shot of Nina Haas and the audience will react and they'll be like, oh shit. I think she really is brilliant in some of these smaller moments and she has a scene towards the end that I think is pretty excellent. Definitely yeah. the closest easier, she'll get to Easier Oscar to clip. Oscar clip that yeah. scene. Like there is one scene where she is really good. And she's a very, very well-respected actress yeah. in Germany. So if the actor's branch is paying attention and they're like, oh, we, we kind of see your career here, that could help too. I, I do yeah. buy that she's a maybe. I it's, think it goes along with like just Tara Love in general. Where there is Tara Love, there might be a Nina Haas nomination. Editing is like maybe a dark horse or a long Editing time. Would, would, I think this would have to be like a top three or a four movie because yeah. the editing is very minimal. I think again, it's like Tara Love, like how much Tara Love is there. That's probably the only tech nomination I would imagine for it. Although like sound is a, like on its very, very best day. Sound does play a role here, not just in the music that she is conducting, but this character has established sensitivity to hearing and sometimes she's noticing noises that are like creeping in the night for her. That would and be like a weird <clears throat> sound nomination. Just yeah, putting but they, it out there, it would, it, be, it would be unusual. It would be, but they also did some stuff with the sound design that I thought was very character driven. Yeah, overall, I mean, my personal feelings and rating on this movie, I would give this an eight out of 10. You know, maybe I respect it a little bit more than I personally love it, but you know, everyone's gotta check this out this year because this is a really interesting film. Yeah, I would give this movie a nine out of 10 and I am gonna do a separate spoiler video for this movie so that I can get more into the analysis, more in depth about this movie because I do have a lot to say about it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Do you edit your own Wikipedia page?